Let's take a look at some of the new workflow improvements found within Cubase Pro 10.5. The Add Track dialog box now contains all different track types, including our global tracks. If we wanted to label a folder track as it's being created from the Add Track dialog, so we could type the name in and enter the folder name like so. There are new key commands that are available that can make your workflow easier. We now have dedicated key commands for the three separate modes of the object selection tool for acoustic feedback on and off in the editors or snap on and off, which is really helpful in macro creation. If you create macros, this has been enhanced as well. So if we have a macro and we want to experiment with the placement of the macro function, we can now move that function up or down. We could add a new command. We could have this window resize. And once we close the window, it will return in the same state so we don't have to constantly re-enable macros. People have asked for a way to decouple enabling cycle mode or disabling cycle mode and our zoom functions. So people would often get these two kind of confused because it was a small area. So there's now a preference under transport where you can say clicking locator range. So once I deactivate that, hit apply, now I cannot turn on and off the cycle mode but I could only choose to zoom. Cubase has always been wonderful for working with multiple projects simultaneously. And we could choose which project is active by clicking on this little icon here in the upper left hand corner. And we can see that that will become illuminated. Now, as we work with this, and if I closed an active project, previously it would automatically activate another project. Uh, but as we close a project, it will now not activate a project because sometimes it could activate the unintended project. And if you had a large template, it could take a while to do that. So if we wanted to manually activate the project we want to work with, that makes it much easier. There are new dialog boxes that have been incorporated to keep the user interface unified with the newer versions. So if we wanted to see our uh, backup project that's been enhanced in addition to our profile manager, we can see our workspaces, the ability for our track controls if we right click, So what functions are available in the tracks for different types of tracks. The ability to generate harmony voices. As well as even dragging and dropping our import options dialog. So if I wanted to drag a file in, we could just see a new dialog box there. Within our media bay, we may also want to be able to quickly navigate to our favorites and customize that. So if I go to my file browser, we could go to our favorites menu, and now we could just right click and choose to rename your favorites so that files can be found quicker for you. One of the aspects that we wanted to pay a lot of attention to is this great function called retrospective record. Often we find that people will play the best parts when they're not recording. If I just had a MIDI part selected, I could play just a little. And if I wanted to have that part, if I thought it was like the most beautiful theme of all time, I could go to my transport and we could do some previous versions and we could just say, we're gonna incorporate and now the part will appear. To make the MIDI retrospective record a bit more obvious, we've added dedicated icons here in the transport. So I could select that track and click on the retrospective record and I could do that for multiple tracks. I could also within just the editor, if I have let's say a French horn part, I can now have the retrospective record within the MIDI editor. 
Now, something that's interesting is this concept of having independent retrospective record for different tracks. And this is where we see this new retrospective record function on the inspector. So quickly, I will just go to my retrospective record and we could also just choose to empty the buffers and we could have up to 10,000 MIDI events. So if I have this particular track selected and I play a little part on my English horn, and let's say I switch to my tracks to my French horn, So now what I could do is choose this, my English horn track, go directly and I could say insert as a linear recording. I could go to my French horn track where I played the longer notes and we'll choose to insert as a linear recording directly there. So I could have independent buffers or independent retrospective records for different tracks. One other option that's really handy is Let's say if I had something in cycle mode. While it was kind of looping, I could now, instead of in choosing to insert it as linear, I could insert it as cycle. We'll look at our lanes. And at this point, we can go to our comping tool and we could select between our different takes and build our perfect comp if you wanted to. So you could work in linear or cycle mode. People often want to migrate data from one project into another. And this has been greatly enhanced in 10.5 as well. So if we go to our file menu to import, and at this point, we'll just say we want to import tracks from project. I will choose to open up a particular project and we could see that it's going to incorporate more different types of tracks. So if I wanted to select all of the tracks or deselect all, you could collapse, expand. We could import, you know, groups, we could import folders. Uh, so all sorts of different tracks that we would want to do. And as we import, if we wanted to import it directly into a new track, we could also match the names, have the input channels. So we have different options for the destinations of where those tracks would go. So with the new import track options, we could do it for audio, MIDI, instrument, sampler tracks, marker, video, group, VCA, FX, folder tracks, and chord tracks. We could also choose what exact elements that we want to be import it. So if we wanted to import all the settings for a particular project, but not the events or parts, or I don't want to incorporate any of the channel or inspector settings, or I wanted to exclude the automation, we could do that. Or if I wanted to import uh, at the absolute position where it was recorded, or relative position, or import at the cursor position. So as soon as I do this, I can now I will select all of my tracks and hit OK. And in just a matter of seconds, we will have all the different tracks incorporated. So I could take all of my different parts, my audio, video, and have marker tracks, everything imported. And this way, you could quickly take different aspects of different projects and incorporate it within your own project. So as you can see, the new workflow enhancements in Cubase Pro 10.5 can really speed up your productions. If you have found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.